Well, storytellers was always Yvonne's passion, and she's, uh, I got co-opted in her passion, so that's where we come from. Um, we go into schools because if the children don't hear the stories, how will they know? Uh, there's so much to tell, and we love to tell the stories, and you wouldn't believe how they remember them. When we go, I, I, if I go into school as a governor, if I'm walking up the footpath, they'll say, is it worth storytellers? Or, or any other uh, thing I go in for, is it worth storytellers today? And they're so excited and all wound up, and they all look forward to world storytellers. But it also spreads outside the school. Now, in Little the other day, we had an encounter. I'll get Yvonne to tell you about it. Well, we were queuing up to pay for our stuff, and the lady in front um, had a child that was leaning over. And I said, oh, she's working hard. And she said, oh, she's working for this, and picked up a croissant. Um, and I said, oh, that's a lot of hard work for a croissant. And she said, she looked at me and she said, you're from World Storytellers, aren't you? I recognize you. She said, and your husband comes into the school, doesn't he? And I said, yes. She said, we loved your stories. And she's at the Priory now, so, <laughs> so we get recognized. <laughs> but they remember the story, so it's important to tell them. Anyway, we're going to present to you one of our stories today. Um, if you remember the story of, we have an introduction. I'm going to, we'll do the whole thing as we do to the school. You remember the story of Noah's Ark and all the animals went in two by two. And at the end of that story, God put a rainbow in the sky to, sh to show his promise that he would love all the people and people began to trust God and he became their friend do you have a friend you'd like to share things with isn't it good to have a friend you can trust today's story is about a man called Abraham who learned to trust God let's open the book at the story called God's friend Abraham was rich. He had lots of servants who worked with him. He had lots of camels, sheep, and he lived with his wife in a very nice place called Haran. One day, God spoke to Abraham. I want, I want you to leave Haran because I have a better place for you to live in. Now, Abraham might have said something like, where? Or how far? Or, thank you very much, but I'm quite happy here. But he didn't. In fact, he said nothing at all. He just gathered up his wife and his servants. And so he gathered up his servants, his camels, and his sheep, and went, and went where God led him. Why? Because Abraham trusted God. It was as simple as that. Just went for the camel. Cana was the name of the place where God led Abraham. A land flowing with milk and honey is what some people called it. 
which mean that there were many cows and goats and bees there and plenty of flowers and grass for the animals to eat. It was altogether a pretty place, even nicer than Haran, and Abraham liked it very much. <laughs> the only problem was that Abraham had no children. And besides that, both he and his wife Sarah were very old. <laughs> Grandpa and grandma old, and maybe even older than that. But Abraham trusted God. So one night, God said to him, Abraham, look up. Do you see the stars? One day, you will have so many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren that counting the stars will be an easy job compared we're counting them. Now, Abraham, look down. Do you see the ground? One day, there will be more members of your family than there are grains of sand on that ground. What did Abraham do? He chuckled, that's what. He giggled, he chortled, and he laughed. <laughs> but God wasn't joking. You will indeed have a son. And through your family, I will do something wonderful for the world. So Abraham trusted God. And it wasn't long before God sent three messengers to visit him. Abraham was very kind to them. He washed their feet, which was the polite thing to do in those days. Then he served them fresh baked bread and a creamy stew. <laughs> it was delicious. As the visitors were patting their tummies and wiping their mouths, they said, Someone giggled. Someone chortled. Someone laughed. But it wasn't Abraham this time. It was Sarah who had been listening in the tent nearby. And the next year, when God's promise came true and the baby was born, there was laughter again. So much laughter, in fact, that laughter is what they decided to call their son, for that is what the name Isaac means. So God's promise to his friend Abraham came true. He did have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and Abraham was glad that he trusted God. Now close your eyes and think of a good friend you can trust. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you for friends we can laugh with and friends we can trust. Thank you that Abraham trusted you and was called a friend of God. Help us to understand what it means to trust you and be a friend of God too. Amen. 
and they were always after volunteers to help with well storytellers and if we had more we could do more schools i'm dying to get into castlebatch and i'm sure we would be well received um we have more time to rehearse as well we meet here at 9 30 on a wednesday for a practice so that we can go to st mark's at 10 o'clock and then on thursday we go to st george's for 8.45, would you believe? Wow. Anyway, thanks for listening. Our reading is taken from James chapter 2. We're reading verses 1 to 10, and Sue is going to take over from verse 14. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him whom you belong to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. We've had a lot packed into our service today, so you'll probably be pleased if I say to you I'm not going to stand here and give a full preach this morning. Well, as even if it's me stood here, you'd be pleased to know that anyway, wouldn't you? But we do need to just reflect a little bit on that passage from James, which we're going to do now. Um, we know that as followers of Jesus, we must never treat people differently because of how they look. And that kind of applies, doesn't it? Way beyond school, way beyond education settings. It, implies, it, it applies in all parts of our life. I'm sure Sandra, in her class this week, is not allowed to treat the children differently, are you, depending on how they look and how they arrive in school. Jesus reminds us in all of his teaching that we should love our neighbours as we love ourselves. And that's not dependent on who they are, where they come from, how they look. We should love our neighbours as we love ourselves. This passage helps us to remember that everyone deserves a chance to learn, regardless of who they are, what their home circumstances are, where they live, what their background is. They all should have that opportunity. And if we look at our volunteers again, we would, I'm sure, say it's wrong to treat them differently just because of the way they look. Frank, I really did feel I should help you to get up off the floor. I'm struggling with it. <laughs> but what are we going to do about this? Is that something that does happen in our community today? 
Is that something that challenges us on a day-to-day basis? We know that Weston is an area that particularly has a lot of people that do live on the streets. I think we're one of the um, highest areas in the, um, across the southwest. But it's still hard, isn't it, when we come across those individuals who are clearly living on the streets. Do we turn a cheek? Do we walk to the other side of the road? Or do we treat them the same? Do we say hello to them with the same smile as we would anybody else we passed when we walk in the street? James tells us that if faith alert that if faith is alone and includes no actions, it is dead. What can we do to ensure that everyone, both in our community and in the global community, has the opportunity to learn? We are thinking today particularly about children in, ed- in children's learning, not just children's learning in our communities, where there are schools and opportunities for them to learn. But Jesus, our teacher, we thank you for the gift of education. Some of us go to school or college to learn, and others continue to learn throughout our lives. We thank you for the sense of wonder that comes with finding out new things. We thank you for the friends we make. We thank you that we have teachers who care about us and want us to do our best. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the gift of learning and that as humans we can increase our knowledge, deepen our understanding and sharpen our skills and abilities. Help us to be mindful that learning is a gift from you to be cherished, to be used for the betterment of ourselves and for others according to the glory of your name and the furtherance of your kingdom according to your will. Here in our community, we have teachers, learners, and places of learning. Little Explorers, Castlebatch, St. George's, St. Mark's, Priory. We thank you for them all, and for the contribution they make to making our community what it is. Bless them and strengthen them. We pray for our places of learning, schools, nurseries, colleges and universities across Western Supermare, that they are safe and supportive places which open up a world of possibilities to all. We pray for those who contribute to our places of learning, teachers, lecturers, teaching assistants, support staff, chaplains, volunteers, leaders and governors. May they each know what valuable contribution they bring in helping their learners flourish and grow. We thank you, Lord, for their talents. We pray for those who learn, whether that comes easily to them or is difficult, that they see the opportunities before them and grow in confidence and wisdom and flourish. We thank you, Lord, for their curiosity and creativity. Loving God, as we celebrate the gift of education, we remember those who find it difficult to learn. We bring to you children and young people in places where education is disrupted because of war and conflict. We pray for those who are excluded from education because they can't afford it or because of their gender. Help us to put our faith into action and to work for peace and equality in your world. We ask all these things in your name. Amen.